Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're talking about loops. Have you ever found yourself stuck in a cycle where you keep repeating the same mistake over and over again? And every single time you tell yourself the next time it's going to be different, but you find yourself once again stuck in the same kind of spiral. So if we take, for example, an extroverted intuitive, we'll find that often the extroverted intuitive is going to be too much in a rush, it's going to be too assertive and too overconfident, it's going to be too dependent on their environment and other people's opinions, and it's going to be too dependent on keeping things open and too afraid to uh, set goals and to narrow things down. What you're also going to find is that if a person is an ISTJ, we're going to find that they're going to be too skeptical, they're going to be a bit too... Uh, conversely, if we look at an ISTJ, we'll find that the ISTJs are going to be a bit too skeptical a bit too much focused on the here and now, a bit too focused on things like how to prioritize and what's most efficient and what's most easy to start with, and that they are going to be a little bit too, a little bit too hyper-focused in how they think about things. But everyone can learn to counteract these kind of biases and to make positive improvements in their lives. I offer coaching through Shopify, and you can check out the link down below to get and explore my coaching options. My coaching sessions are like a Socratic conversation where you get the chance to ask the questions and to think about yourself and what it is that you do, and to become more aware and conscious of how you want to live your life. Yeah, loops are a common recurring thing, and why do they happen? Well, they happen because most of us have a natural bias and a natural personality and a tendency towards a certain form of thinking. And because we have this kind of specialization, we tend to be slightly imbalanced in our decisions and in our actions and activities. This leads us to walking in circles. Imagine that your left leg was slightly longer than your right leg. Now imagine you'd walk around the forest where there is no clear path to follow. The natural inclination will then be to constantly wear slightly to the left. Yeah, soon you'll find yourself seeing the same rocks and the same trees and the same things that you saw before, thinking, am I walking in circles? And yeah, you are. Now, what can you do to avoid this tendency to walk in circles and how can you understand and counteract these natural tendencies and biases? Every single person has their natural sets of biases and there are typically 16 forms of biases that we can talk about. The bias towards being assertive or overconfident, that is overestimating yourself and your own capabilities and your strengths and skills. Or the tendency towards being too modest, the tendency to underestimate what you are capable of, what you can do, what you are, what is possible for you. The other is the bias towards initiative, the tendency to expect that things will happen faster than they will, the tendency to rush things and the tendency to focus on quantity over quality. Or we have the tendency towards precision, the tendency towards perfectionism, the tendency to think that things have to be perfect all the time and that you have to work through all the mistakes before you're allowed to make any consistent progress or pace forward. We can also talk about the collaboration bias, the need or the idea that you have to have everyone's support and everyone else needs to be on board. The idea that uh, your environment needs to give you a sign or that people around you need to give you permission to do something. Versus the independence bias. The idea that you have to do everything on your own and the idea that uh, only if you're able to do it by your own ability are you allowed to make progress and you're not allowed to ask for help or support from others. We can also talk about the adaptability bias, the tendency to believe that you will by staying flexible and keeping things open, you'll find yourself figuring things out as you go and you'll always figure it out and you think that you'll always figure it out. Versus the stability bias, the tendency to think that if we keep the status quo and if we keep things just the way they are, things will be okay and everything will work out. The problem with the bias is that we tend to while well, many of these ideas are positive and in many cases are correct, not all of these ideas are grounded in reality. And the thing about the mindset is that it only works in a set specific set of situations, right? That's why we don't actually need a mindset 
we need an intelligence. And so you need to intelligently think about and cognitively reason about what is really happening and what you really need to do in any given situation. Humans have a natural inclination to fall into a state of autopilot. When we are in a state of autopilot, we don't consciously reflect on what we do or how we do things. We just do them. We follow our given mindset and what we practiced and rehearsed and our natural strengths. And as we do this, we find that, yeah, the autopilot can sometimes effectively solve problems that you've had in the past, but they can't really equip you for anything that is to happen in the future. So if you're actually trying to make positive improvements in your life, the autopilot is a terrible state to be in. You can't solve the future's problems by yesterday's solutions. And even if you had reasons to believe these things in the past, you have to ask yourself if you really do have reasons to believe these things also for the future. You have to ask yourself, why should I believe these things in the first place? Why shouldn't I just think critically about what it is that I experience and why I experience it? Why shouldn't I just keep an open mind? The biggest reason why we fall into these kinds of loops and spirals is because of the influence of modern day stress. We're often so stressed today that we think we have to rush everything. Everything has to be hyper-optimized and hyper-efficient. But in this efficiency, what happens is we tend to find ourselves stuck in familiar loops and cycles. We stick to the past solutions simply because they are faster than inventing or coming up with something new. And so by constantly holding or following this general recipe of life, we think that things are going to be done faster. But staying in the stress cycle is detrimental to your cognitive health and well-being and your personal development. People that are in stress reduce their neuroplasticity, making them less capable of formulating new solutions and to improve and to learn from the problems and experiences that they encounter. A lot of the time, even if we encounter mistakes and issues with the way we live our lives, and even if we recognize the limitations of how we see the world and how we think about things, we find ourselves thinking that, well, I still have to think this way because it's the most efficient way to think and live. And so even if we know and recognize that this is incorrect, we hold and cling to this because we're so stressed that we're unable to think of alternative ways of thinking about it. And so if you find yourself constantly hitting into these kinds of loops and spirals and keep running into these same issues over and over again, you have to ask yourself, are the issues really worth it? Is it really worth it to keep making the same mistakes over and over again? Isn't it time to start learning? And how do you learn? And how do you put yourself in a situation where you can learn and grow up and develop new skills and abilities? Well, to really tap into the neuroplasticity of the brain, you're going to have to engage in mindful rest. Mindful rest is different than just doom scrolling through TikTok or thinking about fancy fast videos or rushes of dopamine through video games, right? While these things can be healthy at certain levels and a certain extent, we need mindful rest, which is when we are mindfully engaging in a relaxing and contemplative activity, such as, for example, taking a walk and then thinking about and recognizing the people you pass and what's happening around you, paying attention fully to what you're doing and where you are, paying attention to your thoughts and as they happen in your mind. Because thoughts and cognition is about learning. We think and we cognitively process events in order to predict future behavior. So whenever you're thinking about something, you do it because you're trying to rehearse or think about how you're going to behave in the future. And so your thoughts become actions for the future. And therefore, you need to give space for thinking and for mindful contemplation and reflection. And you can do this, for example, through the exercise of journaling. And here, what you need to do is really allow thoughts because cognition is about learning, we also need to have stupid thoughts and silly thoughts. Think of a child that's learning to walk and how they stumble and try out different things. In the same way, when your brain is trying to learn from a new experience or from a problem or issue it's encountering, it has to experiment and think about and come up with random associations and thoughts that could potentially help them. And this random creative experience will help you eventually figure out a winning strategy or a winning solution. Consider at what pace you live your life. Think about how quickly you talk when you talk and interact with others. Think about how fast you walk. Ask yourself, why am I walking so fast? Why am I talking so fast? Why am I solving problems so quickly? Why do I write so quickly? Why do I do these things so fast? 
and think about whether you maybe want to slow down. Recognize that by constantly being in a rush, you're quickly draining yourself of mental resources and this can lead to crashing later on. Perhaps you find that in the evenings you have no energy for anything and you're just dead. Perhaps you find yourself constantly wanting to shut off because things have gone too fast. Yeah, this high intensity sprint lifestyle will often lead to a tendency to crash into walls. If you run too fast, of course, sometimes you're going to trip. Therefore, consider what pace would feel most natural to you. Try to find the natural way to talk, to live, to act, and to engage in daily activities. And there, you might want to ritualize your life. Here, you might want to turn anything you do in your life, from cleaning to cooking to uh, any form of work, into a mindful activity where it's something that you engage in consciously and with engagement and interest. You want to find yourself constantly adjusting your activity level so that it's not so slow or so easy that it becomes boring, but also not so intense and so stressful that it becomes draining. Therefore, to find the optimal state, what we can call the flow state, we need to find a way to constantly cycle and make sure that you know, we constantly regulate towards an average or healthy level of activity. This can mean a healthy level of participation at evenings and events. It can mean a healthy level of activity during work, a healthy pace in tune with your energy level, with your motivation for the task and your level of skill in this activity. If you find that you're getting too bored and that the pace is getting too slow, definitely up it a notch. If you find that it's going too fast, definitely slow down and find ways to slow down. Joseph Campbell came up with this elegant metaphor called the hero's journey. And in the hero's journey, we see that often we start out with a call to action. Every single person is receiving a call to action, something that they should be doing, something that would be really important. And a lot of the time, it's something widely outside of your comfort zone, right? So if you have a comfort zone and your comfort zone is always going to be in autopilot and it's going to be when and how you end up in loops, you're going to find that this new thing, this challenge, this goal, this project is too difficult for you or too challenging or too cap uh, beyond your current level of capability, right? And so as you recognize this, you're going to want to refuse the call. And the refusal of the call is the number one reason why we fall into loops. Yeah, often instead of accepting the call to action, the thing that you're really thinking about, the thing that you really want, what you do is you settle for this easy solution. And this easy solution, while it seems to offer practical benefits and seems much more plausible, often it doesn't appeal to you enough that you really want to fully commit to it. And so you engage in this half hazard, comfortable routine of spiraling around these kind of decisions, these comfortable questions, these comfortable answers, these comfortable activities. And these things, they don't really solve anything for you, right? They don't really fix anything for you. And so what you really need to do is you need to accept the call to action. We need to go and enter into the unknown. That means that, yeah, we do need to routinely challenge ourselves by upping the difficulty level in our lives and pushing ourselves to think outside what we are comfortable thinking. And that means entertaining new ideas and possibilities, considering and thinking about problems that you've never faced before to take on projects that you normally wouldn't. You can see how the dominant function or the dominant personality trait of an individual can become easily blinding. Really, what ends up happening is because we're so good at it, because we enjoy it so much, because we've developed it so well, we think it's a one-size-fits-all solution to every problem in life. And we think that by just using this in the way that is most comfortable for us, we'll fix everything that's happening in our lives. But that's not the truth. The truth is, you need to use all cognitive functions, you need to develop all skills in your life in order to manage and create a happy and diverse life for yourself. And that also means acknowledging your weaknesses and the issues in life and things that you don't always want to think about. Now, the developmental ideal that I tend to suggest for everyone is not loops because they keep you stuck in a cycle, but rather spirals. Spirals are a lot like loops because the truth is growth is not an easy thing and most people will find themselves staying in this familiar comfort zone. And yeah, there's no reason why you shouldn't use your dominant personal traits as often as possible. If you have a talent for it, you should definitely nurture that talent. But it's important that you do it to the healthy extent and that you also acknowledge your weaknesses and try to counteract your natural biases as much as possible. You can't completely erase your personality or your skills and you should seek to 
move forward with your entire being and all your skills and talents. The most important thing is that, yeah, even if you move in spiral patterns, you're still making a positive improvement in your day-to-day -day lives. You're making consistent, small, incremental improvements that help you move forward in life. And yeah, that means often you're not going to make any drastic life changes. You're not going to change your personality from today to tomorrow, but you're going to find yourself consistently, slowly making positive steps forward for yourself. And that you're going to note this, that I made progress. I moved forward. I've made positive steps from who I used to be. I haven't completely or fundamentally altered who I am, but I've found more healthy ways to live that are more connected to my higher self and ultimately the person I really want to be. Now, if you want help or coaching to get out of a loop, 